So now we are going to look into the Hultz trend method. This is also known as double exponential smoothing because here we will use two exponential smoothing parameters. So now let's start. So here we will represent the main equation like this yt plus 1 equals to lt plus h into tt. One of the changes we are having, we are now referring to the forecast value as yt plus 1 instead of before as we are using yt only. But it means the same thing, you know, because when we were using yt, we were, so if we were using yt here, we would simply use lt minus 1, okay, plus we would use h into t, t minus 1. So instead of presenting it like this, now we are presenting it like this. We are just using yt plus 1 and then instead of t minus 1, we are using t and t. And just forming it like this makes it easier for us to do the calculation when we deal with this double exponential smoothing. But so here what we are doing is actually we are decomposing the main time series data into two. So first one is the level, L we refer to level and T we refer to trend. Okay. So L is for level and T is for trend. So we decompose the data in, into these two components, level and trend. And normally we use this method when our data has some trend, but does not have any seasonality. So now when we decompose the main time series into these two, we will have equation for the LT, okay, to focus. So we have to focus the LT. And as you can see here, we use one of our smoothing par parameter that is alpha. So this equation is quite similar as what we are doing actually in exponential smoothing. So LT will be modeled with some weight or some kind of uh, value, uh, smoothing parameter weight with its real value on that level. Okay, so it's the T and T in the same level. And then 1 minus alpha into LT minus 1 plus T, T minus 1. So what we are doing here is we are now using the rest of the, so if my alpha value is 0 0.4, okay, so I multiply my value of time period t with 0 0.4, and then we multiply the summation of level of previous term and the trend of previous term, the summation of that with 0 0.4, no, actually it would be 0 0.6, okay, so if this is 0 0.4, it will be 0 0.6 because we have 1 minus alpha, okay. And then to estimate our trend level, what we do is we use another parameter here, smoothing parameter beta, and then we estimate it with LT minus LT minus one. Okay, so we take that difference of the two levels, okay? Level of, of time period T and with its previous time period, and plus one minus B with the previous trend, okay? So if you look into them, them carefully, you will see they are actually very similar equations and it's just that we are introducing two smoothing parameters now. And for trend uh, calculation, we are actually focusing more on the difference between the two levels. From there, we are getting the trend. And for level, we are actually getting it from the real time series value. We put more effort there, but we also take the summation of the level and the trend of the previous terms, okay? And just to show you, so here yt is the time value at t plus 1, and then lt is the level value at time t, and then tt is the trend value at time t, and alpha and beta are smoothing parameters. And here h is our forecast horizon. This value here is our forecast horizon. Normally, we will not be using the h uh, function when we are doing the training sample forecast, but when we will be doing test sample forecast, that's when we will be using this h as our forecast horizon. Okay, and now we will see how to do this in Excel. And before we go to Excel, just two more things. That is the value of alpha and beta, they should be between zero and one. So now we are, do, we are going to do this halt strength method. Okay, yeah, I'm just calling it halts. I'm going to move the halt up and then use these three columns for halts method and I'm going to give it a color, okay. And we will need two parameters. So for alpha and beta, I'm going to have two values here, okay? So here we will need LT. This is for our level forecast. Then we will need TT for our trend forecast. And then we will have Y 
t plus 1, which is actually our main forecast, okay, using the HALT method. So that's how we will proceed, okay. And for the parameter of LT, the alpha parameter here, I will use this cell, and for beta parameter for the trend, I will use this cell, okay. And I'm just putting some values here just to start off. So let's say I'm going to put 0 0.7 here and 0 0.6 here. Okay. So now just to start off, we, we have to start from somewhere, right? So just to start off, what we will do is we will set the value of this L2 to same as Y2. Okay. So that's just to start off with some values, we are fixing it like this. We, we are doing it like this because we don't have all the previous values to put, to form the equations, okay? So just to start off, we are following this approach. And I will make it red just, just so that I know that I uh, this is not a real equation solution, but it's a starting point. And we have to do more or less the same thing for the trend as well. And to do that, what we will do is, we will go here and we will take the difference between the two real values of y, okay? yt minus yt minus one, okay? So we are kind of actually following this part of the equation only, okay? Here, only this part and here, only this part, okay? So just the first part of the equations for, for, from both uh, LT equation and TT equation. Okay, so this is what we get and we will again make it red because we know that it's not a real forecast. Okay. And for yt plus 1, we will just follow this part of the equation without the h because we will use h only for the out sample. So here the forecast will be the summation of the previous two l and t. Okay, so that's will that will be our forecast. And actually this will be this equation will Will be will remain same for all the values through yt plus one. So I will just double click here and I will make the first one red because you know the first one is not really uh, the forecast because we are not using the equations properly. So now from this period we are going to start with the real equation. So to form the equation, what I'm going to do is I start with the equal to, and I see that our equation starts with alpha, and which we are saying this one is alpha. Then we fix it using a 4, then we multiply it with yt. So our yt is here, okay? And then we use plus, bracket open, 1 minus again alpha, which is here, and we have to fix this, okay? So we multiply this with our previous level value, lt minus 1, plus our previous trend value. And then we close the bracket, okay? So that's our equation formation. We are now exactly following this equation as we mentioned here. And then if we just double click, all the equations will be there and we will use up to two or three decimal points. So now we have to do the same and put the equation for the trend part. So to do that, we will again start with the function and here is our beta value. So we select the beta. We have to fix the beta because we'll be using the same beta cell for all the values in the column. And then we multiply this with the difference between our LT and T minus one. So our LT is this one and our LT minus one is this one. Okay, and we close it. And then we start with the plus and then bracket one minus beta. Beta is here again and we fix it, okay with a four or it could be different common in a common in your computer. And if you don't know the common, you can just put the two dollar symbols, okay? And then we close it and multiply this with T minus one, which is just the previous trend value, okay? And then enter. So this is our value for the trend two. And if we just double click here, all the values are in place. And I'm going to just keep up to two decimal points or three, okay. So now we have all the values and, and these were added up. So we have all our forecast ready, you know. And yeah, as you see, it's not really that complex. 
But now we have a bit tricky part when it comes to the out sample forecast, like here. So this point, when we are trying to do this level here for July, so you see that to forecast this July value here, this is the main forecast, we didn't really use any of the July values. We were using June values. So that was okay. We could do up to this point, right? When we are here, then we, we start to use these level values. And these level values depend on this value, okay? The, the real data of this value. And theoretically, we are not, or practically, we are not going to have this value if, if we are really doing our sample forecast. So we have to come up with a way so that we can forecast the out sample periods without using any of this information, okay? Any of the real values of the out sample period. Because in, in, in practice, we are not going to have them if we are doing dynamic forecasts, right? So we cannot, be, we cannot really use these values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first delete them, okay? So I don't have them. So I have the, this one is my latest one, which is based on previous values, so that's okay. And then if I consider this one as my forecast, our sample forecast period, I will put the H, the horizon, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I have six, a six forecast horizon and I'm going to use a light color here so that we do not see them properly, okay. And then what I'm going to do is, so this part is fine, right? And for this part here, so now for forecast, what I'm going to do is actually, I'm just going to put my LT and I'm going to fix it. And then plus, I'm going to select my forecast horizon that is the H part of the equation. And then I'm going to multiply it with my trend component, okay? And then I'm going to fix it as well with F4, okay? So only what will be, when I'll drag down in my hour sample forecast, what will change is only this part, H48. So that is the forecast horizon. It will be all always multiplied with my trend uh, with my trend value, okay? And then I'm going to drag it. So here it is. So now I have some forecast values, and that's how actually we can do the out sample forecast using the Hall trend method. So now one more thing I would like to do is I would like to calculate the error. And here, if I write error halt for I, I use H for halt. And I'm going to use a different color here just to indicate the error. So I'm going to do again the MAP calculation following the equation as you can see here. Okay. So what we are going to do is we start and then absolute. So we'll get rid of the negative values, absolute of our actual value, which is here, minus our forecast value, which is here. Okay. And then I divide this with a T, the actual value, so which is here, and then I'm going to get the percentage of error, okay? And then I'm going to just double click, and then to make it look nicer, I'll just take only three decimal points, and I will move it here. Awesome, so now we have all the errors calculated, right? And I will actually just, to, to take a shortcut, I'll just drag it, the MAP calculations. And I'll remove this part, okay? So here you see, I, I kept the naive forecast one so that we can compare with the naive forecast. So here you see, we just took the average of all these points that are available, okay? So we take the average of that and we multiply it with 100 to get the percentage. And also for this period, yeah, I should just uh, reduce one, yeah. And then it looks fine. And this is fine. So you see, this method also does not work better than the naive forecast model. If you remember in the earlier videos, we said that, you know, for the validation of the forecast model, we have to compare our forecast model with some of the most common uh, used approaches. And the very basic one is that the naive forecast and our model should perform better than naive forecast. But one more thing, again, we can quickly try to optimize our parameters to get to minimize our error rates and to do that I'm going to solver actually it's better to reset so I'm in my solver I reset all these things and then I'm going to select the cell overall MAP minimize this I'm going to say minimize and by changing cells this one 
and this one. Okay, and then solve. The model converged the solution and constraints were satisfied and okay. So overall it was, it reduced a little bit from what we had before. And this one is actually the, the training sample is much better now not not much better like a little bit better than our naive forecast but our test sample actually sucks but anyway so that's how we can actually do the halt strength method but now we will go to halt winter method so when we have season and trend both in our data set how can we model that 